Happy Sabbath. Is Jesus with you this morning? I hope so. I woke up this morning in a real different way than I generally do. 1.30 this morning I woke up hilariously laughing. <laughs> and I mean I was just rolling laughing. Laughing so hard that I had to get out of bed. I was afraid I was going to wake my wife up. And I was continually laughing on my way into the bathroom just like Dad and I used to laugh years ago. And uh, I woke my wife up. She's like, what is going on? And uh, this just a little time I was spending with my dad in my dream. It was hilarious. The faces that that man can make is just tell a thousand words, you know. And uh, it, was, it was very funny. Anyways, our little talk today is, what is your focus? You know, the world has got so many things today that they want you to focus on. But, but where should our focus be? It should be on Jesus, right? Because wherever Jesus is, that's where we want to be. It, it doesn't matter where that place is. You know, if that place is a dungeon, then that's where we want to be. Because that's where you're going to be most happy. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6, there is no other. And the Bible makes no excuse for it. Period. There's only one grave that's empty. And that's Jesus's. He is the one. Um, you know, they, they call TV programming because it programs. Right? You gotta be careful of what you're feasting on. You know, I, I just think that this 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 whole mask thing is just taught people to think differently. You know, and, and I think it's done a lot to hurt the church. This church used to be filled up, and look at us now. There's all these holes. And I, I want to see it filled back up. Um, you can call me a rascal if you want. I mean, I went to Publix the other day, and I didn't have a mask. And I guess some people think you're supposed to wear a mask. Well, I didn't wear a mask. I know. But there's other people in there that don't wear a mask, too. And if they're not going to enforce it, then I don't want a mask. I don't have a problem. Anyways, if you can tell the way people look at you when you're not wearing the mask. It's like mask police. I mean, they, they got their faces covered, but their eyes squint up, and they look at you like you're some dastardly dude. You know, and oh, God forbid if you walk the wrong way in the aisles, because they have arrows, you know. Oh, you're just a real bad person if you walk the wrong way. And I don't understand this. When did we become mass police and, and, and one-way streets and the super, you know, the, the grocery store police? We're being programmed to, to tattle on our neighbors. You know? You see something, say something. Rat your neighbor out. You know, I don't care what my neighbor does. That's his business. I got enough problems to worry about what I do every day. I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm fighting sin all the time. The, the, this, this fellow inside of me wants to do things that's just wrong, always. And it's a bad. You know, if I'm not focused on Jesus, I'm, in, I, I'm, I'm done for, it, buddy. I'm done. There's no hope. No hope at all. And I know how quickly I can fall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can see the guy drunk in the ditch. And I tell you what, for the grace of God, there goes I. You know? We, we, we need to be in a different focus. We need to have Jesus Christ first and foremost. And if we have that, we're not going to be so concerned with other people's, you know, life. I can't only drive this car. I can't drive all those cars and my car. But there's too many of us that want to control everybody else. And that's not Christ's way. Jesus didn't do that, did he? 
No, he said, this is the way, walk ye in it. He doesn't force anybody. He doesn't whip them into submission. Jesus is amazing. And as we go down here, let's, let's open our Bibles up, if you are, to um, Luke 24. And I want to begin in verse 13. And it says, And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs, which is probably some of your Bibles say seven miles. And they walked together of all these things which, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Does Jesus want to be where people are talking about him? Where they're meeting him? And they want, him, they want Jesus? Don't you think Jesus wants to be there? Doesn't the Bible promise us where two or more are gathered, there am I? Do we believe these things that the Bible says? I hope so. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Why do you suppose that the Bible says that their eyes were holding so they should not know him? I wonder if it was because maybe their focus was wrong. Maybe they were programmed to think on a certain way about certain things. And they thought Jesus was supposed to do something totally different than what he did. We'll continue to read. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? Can you just hear Jesus saying this? I mean, Jesus has come out of the tomb, brothers and sisters. Are you, you hearing me? Can you imagine the way he's saying this to these guys? I mean, I'm not trying to put a face on Jesus, but I, I mean, I'm telling you, God has got a sense of humor. You know what I'm saying? He's with these guys that want. Why are you sad? Where was their focus? They didn't realize, did they? Because they were taught wrong. All the biases, everything that they were, they were taught was wrong. Let's continue to leave and, and, and read, and I'll make my point here. And one of them said, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And has that not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, here's Jesus again. Look at this. What's he say? What things? <laughs> Can you imagine? God is speaking to him. Like he doesn't even know. What are you talking about? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Now, when you look at the cross, crucifixion to the Romans was just a horrific death. Right? Very painful death. It was, it was horrible. But what was, what was death on a cross to the Jewish people? What does it say? To him that has hung on a tree, he's what? Cursed. He's cursed of God. Right? So when you're cursed of God in death, is there any hope? There's no hope. Right? None at all. How were these guys taught? Are you, are you hearing me? All right. Where do I need to pick it up? 19. 19. No, I think it was past. 21. 21. Thank you. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. He should. You hear that word? Should have redeemed Israel. 
But what's their whole thought process? He was cursed of God. And he wasn't what we thought he was, right? These are our followers. Now, these, these couple guys here, they're not, they're not the disciples as we know them, but they are disciples. You follow me? These guys were ardent students of, of Jesus. Have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. The third day. How about mm -hmm. that? There's some more stuff in there. I'm not going to unpack all that. But... Anyways. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre, and when they found not his body, they came saying that he had also seen a vision of angels which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Who? What do you think that did to those two fellows right there? Those words spoken from Jesus, who has come out of the tomb, victorious, you think there was a little flare in his voice? You think there was a little twinkle in his eye? Do you think that made a shake in them and their biases of everything that they were taught? Because what was the Jewish understanding? That, that the Messiah would come and he would do what? Beat back the Romans, right? He would make Israel the, the, the king of the world. Right? Where did they get this teaching? Is it found in the Bible? So how does this happen? How does this wrong programming happen? They were mixed up. They were looking at his second coming. Are we any better? No. Are we mixed up? Yes. Why? What is your focus? We really have more facts today than they did. Oh yeah, we have everything we can see history. Absolutely. Exactly. They say hindsight's twenty twenty, right? I mean we get the, the bigger picture. But yet we're just as messed up. Are we? So what are the Jewish people looking for today? So why are they sacrificing? So what is our focus? You know, I think it's the extra biblical stuff that got in their way. And I think the guys had really good intentions, the rabbis. But they, you, you get off track. You see, there's lots of books written. There's even books being written today in Adventist circles that are, that are against... Um, the end time theology that, that, that there will actually be a people that aren't sinning when Jesus comes. Did Jesus ever ask anybody to do something that they couldn't do? No. Why would he do that? He says, follow me. Follow me. If we truly follow him, and that's our focus, this garbage that you and I are fighting, is going to fall off of us. Fall off of us. And it's not our doing. We are changed by what? Beholding. Beholding. By beholding, we become changed. It's that simple. 
Spiritually speaking, we eat with our eyes. And if we're eating Jesus, we're going to become like him. It's just that simple. But we're, st we're, we're stuck on all these other garbage things. Like what my neighbor's wearing. Or which way he's walking up and down the aisle. Are you kidding me? I mean, come on. What, 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 is, what is Satan's job? What does he do? What is he called in the Bible? And the accuser. Right? So who are we when we're ratting everybody out? Stop and think about it for a moment. We're all guilty. We're all guilty. I'm going to read 26 again. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? In beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass... As he sat at meat, which means to eat, with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them, and their eyes were opened. What was their focus? Everything that they had been taught and all this stuff they let go of because he had, this is what, he just explained to them on the road the scriptures concerning himself and the light that they should have been taught in the first place. You hear me? And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? Is that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful to what? I hope that makes you jealous. I hope you want a relationship like that. That you break bread with Jesus at your own table. That he would open up the scriptures to you. Hasn't he promised us these things? In the person of the Holy Spirit? That he would show us all things of Jesus? Isn't that what the Bible says? I hope that's what you want, brothers and sisters. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe Jesus shared with them Micah chapter 5, you know, Daniel chapter 9. Uh, let, let us turn to Luke chapter 1. Staying in the same book. Chapter 1. You want to make it? Let's turn to verse 68. Say amen when you're ready. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our, fathers, our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring formed, 
from our from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel who's this talking about John the Baptist, John the Baptist. what what is our mission if it's not that of John the Baptist. Is that not our mission? Yeah. To prepare the way for Jesus to come back the second time. Not the first time. The second time. This is, this is very important work. Because the world, once again, needs to be turned upside down in righteousness, doesn't it? People have to have their focus upon Christ. Or this, this thing's going to continue to go on. All this is is a stay of execution for, for Lucifer. As long as this goes on, that's all it is. Let's turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. A little bit further left. While you're getting there, I just want to read you something that Doug Batchelor put on. And I think it's just so good, okay? Um, you know in California, they're not allowed to go to church, okay? So Doug Batchelor has put out something called Protesting the Devil. Our church found a creative way to assemble safely on Sabbath without violating California's ban on church gatherings. We are still allowed to gather in protest in California. <laughs> so, protesting the devil. Dear Granite Bay members, you are heartily invited to exercise your First Amendment rights to participate in peaceful gatherings and freedom by, of speech by joining in our heartfelt protest on Saturday, August 15th at 10 a.m. As true Protestants, we will be peacefully protesting against the devil sin, lawlessness, hate, and evil of every kind. Satan especially dislikes a peaceful protest. During this gathering, we will be reviewing our, pro our protest manual, which may look quite similar to the Bible. Rehearsing our protest slogans and songs, which are sometimes confused as hymns. We will be accepting contributions to underwrite our protest cause, might look like a church offering. Petitioning the highest authority with our protest, which could resemble prayer. Just saying. Our protest will be very loud because we are hoping to disturb the devil and not our neighbor. Ooh. Because this is a protest against Satan, there will be no looting, littering, blocking traffic, or burning buildings or flags. Smiling at others is encouraged. And this protest is open to all like-minded citizens of God's kingdom. Remember, the most effective way to protest the devil is to worship Jesus. So please join us in the Granite Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church parking lot to protest against the devil's diabolical behavior since he took office. We plan to keep protesting every week until Jesus sets up his own administration. Our peaceful protest will begin at 10 a.m. and should conclude by 11.15. As always, keep in mind the current government health coronavirus safety recommendations. Amen. Pastor Doug. Amen. That's pretty good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, there's a way to keep the ball rolling forward. Alright, Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 1. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Amen. You know what? I just read 42. Does this yeah. thing blew it? But that was good. <laughs> now I'm going to read 40. 3 through 5. 
man, I mean, I knew it wasn't right, but this, it's all spoke about Jesus, so it was good, yeah. All right, 40 and 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Does this not sound like our job? This is our word, brothers and sisters. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see, see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. This is good news, brothers and sisters. This is what God wants us to do. This is where we need to be. Let's turn our Bibles back to Luke, if you would. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, and I want to start at verse 18. I like to let the Bible speak for itself. You all there? Luke 7 and verse 18. And the disciples of John showed him all of these things. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? You hearing that? What's going on with John? Sounds like doubt. Sounds like doubt, doesn't it? John that did this great work. He certainly had some doubt, didn't he? Let's, let's continue to read on and see what's going on here. When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously appareled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, Among those that are born of a woman, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. That's a pretty high honor the Bible's given its man, isn't it? And it did say that he doubted, didn't it? Do you have doubt, brothers and sisters, in your life? John the Baptist had doubt. But he didn't stay there. You hear me? He didn't stay there. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him, and the publicans, justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating, eating bread, nor drinking wine, and ye, ye say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man is come, eating and drinking, and ye, shall, ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man, and a wine giver, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Amen? Amen. Jesus spoke pretty firm, didn't he? 
He spoke pretty straightforward. Who did he have a problem with? The unbelievers. Self-righteous. These people that were supposed to be leaders of the people, right? They're supposed to be religious leaders of the people. You think the battle's coming from out there or is the battle coming from in here? Yeah.